Thank you for joining me. Today, I'll be putting a hollow grind on a sloyd knife. This is one of my sloyd knives. It already has a hollow grind on it. It's due for another sharpen on the wet dry sandpaper, but other than that, it's good to go. That's what's great about a hollow grind. Low maintenance, easy to sharpen, nice and quick. And this is the actual knife that we'll be sharpening today. It's what I thought was another Mora 106, except the shape is quite different than the previous blade as you'll see in a little bit. So the bevel of this knife is actually quite rounded off and it makes for a very dull carving experience. This can happen after many hand sharpening sessions. So I'm very excited to see how this blade will turn out in the end after I have it all polished up and sharpened. And here's a side-by-side -side comparison just to show how really different these blades are. The knife I'm going to sharpen today is actually longer than this other one. Perhaps it's just been ground down to the point where the belly came off completely, but it's a very curious shape. Not a bad shape. A pointy knife is a good knife. But we just need to make sure this thing is as sharp as possible. So I like a good before and after, so we'll do a paper test before I sharpen and after. So let's just see how this performs. Alright, so it doesn't cut into the paper whatsoever. The paper is rejecting the knife, which is crazy. It means it's very, very dull. So I'm actually chopping at the paper now, and now I'm hacking at it. And I finally got through. And in the end, I end up having to rip it off. So let's take a look at my jigs. This is a regular knife jig from Tormek, and it's for all kinds of stuff. Kitchen knives, pocket knives, sloyd knives, whatever will fit. I did try to hollow grind a knife that didn't quite fit, and that's why you see a little bit ground off the back. This is a sloyd jig. It's from Hewn and Home. It's a specialized jig with a specialized purpose. It's for sloyd knives of a certain size. One side of the jig is bigger and the other is smaller, and it allows you to clamp right on the back of a sloyd knife, which is wonderful for getting a proper hollow grind. I'll show you how it works in just a bit. This is a small knife jig. It's for very small blades and all kinds of knives that don't fit in the other jigs, so it's good to have just as a backup. So the jig of choice today was the Sloyd jig, which I was relieved to find out this knife fit without any issues whatsoever. This jig is just a miracle when it comes to putting a really nice hollow grind on a blade. So Nick Westerman of Here and Home, the maker of this jig, he actually put out a really nice YouTube video explaining in depth on how this jig works. But basically, I'm just going to tighten little by little on each side until it's nice and snug. And then at the end, you're just going to see me wiggle it a little bit to make sure. I'm not going to try to force it out, of course, but just give it a little wiggle to make sure it doesn't slip out easily. So now that the knife is secure in the jig, I'm just going to black out the bevel with a black permanent marker. And if you've seen my other methods for sharpening, there's a very good reason for this. It's just so that you know you're getting an even grind. Once you remove all the black marker, you know you've removed all that you need to remove. And then you can move on. So this is my Tormek T4. It works great for my needs because I don't have a big shop and I just use it for little bits at a time. And here's my very skilled water pour where I totally don't spill it everywhere and make a mess. And we're gonna see that this stone is very thirsty. So it's gonna drink that water right up. I have to fill it up a few more times. So this model of Tormek is wonderful for my needs. As I said before, it's the T4. I did want the T8 because it's a bigger, beefier model and it, you can run it for as long as you want. This particular model, it says that you can only run it for half an hour at a time. I probably have run it more than that. I don't keep it running the entire time. I shut it off in between. But I haven't had any problems with it shorting out or anything like that. I don't take the risk because I don't want to lose the machine. It'd just be nice to know that I didn't have to only run it for half an hour at a time. But it's good enough for my needs. It works really well. So now that the stone is nice and soaked, I'm going to go ahead and use the stone grater to get the surface of the stone exactly how I want it. So the more you grind knives, the more smooth the stone gets, so that's why they include the stone grater. One side is for 220 and the other side is for 1000. 
and it gets it as close as possible to those grits. So the stone itself is wearing down a little bit by now, but it still works just fine. I do want to get a CBN wheel to make the hollow grinding a lot quicker, but as I'm stating, this works perfectly fine. It just takes a little bit longer and sometimes the water gets a little bit messy. But it really depends on how much material you have to remove from a particular knife. If I was to apply a hollow grind to a brand new knife, it would be quick and painless. But after hand sharpening for many, many sessions, blades become uneven. One side will have a different angle than the other, and it takes quite a bit of grinding to get it back into tip top shape. So as you can see, the stone needed a little bit more water, topped it up, and now we're ready to go on to the next step. And now for the next tedious part. I need to find what angle that I need to grind at. And as I was mentioning before, since this knife has been hand sharpened for all of its life, both sides of the bevel are dramatically different angles. So what I have to do is find where to begin. Sometimes you'll have to meet in the middle somewhere. And this is really explained well in Nick Westerman's video on the Hewn and Hone YouTube. But as you can see here, one starts near the top of the bevel and the other side is down at the bottom of the bevel. So I take quite a bit of tweaking and playing with the tool rest to see how far out it has to be in order for there to be a good even middle point between the two angles. Since I was carving for a few years before I got the Tormek and before I got the Sloyd Jig, a lot of my knives were in the same boat as this. But after you get it established, the jig makes it very repeatable and then you won't have this problem again. This was getting a little frustrating because one side was so dramatically different than the other side, I had to keep messing around. Going repeatedly back and forth, you know, bringing out the length and I did eventually get it, but right before I wanted to make sure I blacked out the bevel so I could get some fresh, uh, fresh perspective on this. So the reason why I rest it on where it will be as I'm grinding and just manually move the wheel so that it does a light grind off to see where exactly it will begin grinding. So as you can see right there, it's pretty good near the top on one side and on the other side it should be the exact same distance um, near the bottom. Good enough for me. This is close enough to the middle as I could find. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten the tool rest or the jig rest and then I can actually begin. So here's the fun part and in some cases tedious part. So with my left hand, which is my non-dominant hand, I generally speaking lightly hold the bottom of the jig and keep it flush against the jig rest. I don't want to force down towards the grinding wheel with my left hand because I don't want to bend the jig. So you're basically going to hold it lightly with your dominant hand and guide it that way. I usually press down on the bevel to make sure that it's grinding fairly well because if I had a CBN wheel it would be more aggressive and remove material a lot easier but because I have the just the standard stone that came with it it takes considerably more grinding to to get it back down to where it should be and because this one needed a lot of a lot of sharpening it needed a lot of material to be removed there's quite a bit of pressing and holding firmly that you'll see me doing you'll also hear the knife sing I find it to be very annoying when it does this, but the only way to prevent that is to hold firmly on the bevel against the stone as it grinds. Otherwise, you'll hear it sing and it's very loud and very annoying. So that was pass one. I did one grind on each side to see where it's landing and I'm just gonna keep going. I'm just gonna keep grinding on both sides until we get it to where it wants to be or to where I want it to be. Now you may have seen me wipe the blade before with a paper towel. That's because if you don't wipe with the whetstone as you go, it'll leave little rust spots on the blade. 
And I certainly don't want that because this knife doesn't belong to me. I don't want to send a knife back to somebody with little rust spots on it. It doesn't affect performance whatsoever. It just doesn't look very nice. So I will wipe it as I go. And I recommend to anyone to do the same thing. You don't want to leave water on it because it will stain it. So I'll speed up the video just because you don't need to see me grinding in real time. It takes quite a bit of time to restore a blade in this kind of condition. And right here, I'm just slowing it down so you can see me hold it with the fingertips. I know from some angles, I'm using the thumb, it kind of covers it. Next time, maybe I'll go from the other side because my dominant hand is kind of covering it at times. But this is a good way to see me actually guide the bevel. So each point where it's actually needing to be on the stone the most, that's where you'll see my fingers applying pressure. I apply a lot of pressure at certain points because some spots are more troublesome than others, as you'll see. You know, for how odd I said this blade was, don't get me wrong, it actually has a really nice shape. I like knives that are nice and pointy like this. They make it easy to get into those tight areas that have a really tight curve. Because when you're green woodworking and spoon carving, there's a lot of curves and you're going against the grain a lot. So having a really fine tip knife like this makes those tight spots a lot easier to work with. Especially now that this knife is very sharp, it'll be a dream to work with. I actually wouldn't mind having a knife just like this in my toolkit. Getting close to the end, as I continue to grind away material, just want to reflect upon my experiences and put a disclaimer out there. I'm by no means a leading authority on all things spoon carving or, or knife sharpening. I'm still learning and I'm enjoying the learning process. So as I learn, I share what I learn and hopefully it's of some benefit to some people out there. Here you'll see me giving the stone just a fresh touch up. As you grind, it makes the stone smooth. So giving it a fresh touch up, especially for that last little bit, for those troublesome little spots on the bevel that just won't go away. It's good to give it a fresh touch up. Now this will be the last run on the Tormek. Just for those little spots, you'll see there's still some black on the bevel, some black marker, and I'm going to apply some very firm pressure and just make sure that it, that it comes completely off. On this side, you'll see right near the bevel there was some, and on that side, right near the back of the bevel there was some. So right here is where I'm really jamming down with my thumb as firmly as I can without harming the jig, the knife, or the Tormek itself, but these Tormeks are tough. They take a lot of pressure. The motor in them is very strong. So now we're at the final stretch. This is the last little bit on the Tormek. I'm just going ahead and applying pressure where I need to to remove all the, the, the areas with black marker still on it, and just to make sure that both sides are nice and even as possible. And after a quick look, you can see that I'm happy with that. Let's go in for a closer look at how it looks now compared to before. As you can see, it's very flat and both sides are nice and even, which is beautiful. Now on this side, you can see there's a slight difference in, in one part of the blade. Now, it could be due to the way the blade is shaped, but most likely is because I put too much pressure on that one spot. Strictly cosmetic, doesn't affect the edge whatsoever. And now for the wet dry sandpaper. This is adhesive backed wet dry sandpaper, which I bought from Hunan Hone. The flat block underneath, also from Hunan Hone. It's coated in a white plastic that makes it really easy to remove the paper from. So for the wet dry sandpaper, I'm only going to use 3000 and 7000 grit sandpapers. The reason being, I do not want to remove too much material, I just want to give the edge one final polish. I don't want to take too much material off of the hollow ground I just established because I want it to last a really long time for the knife's owner. You can see the sandpaper start to turn black, that's how you know it's working. It's removing just a small amount of material. And throughout this session, you'll see me obsess over that little dimple. I was wondering, should I take it back to the Tormek or not? I noticed there's quite a large amount of burr on the edge, which is awesome. 
to have, but I'm just removing it here by slicing it through some end grain. Then I'll return to the wet dry, make some final passes on the 3000 grit. So you'll see me drag away from the knife's edge on the wet dry sandpaper. The reason for this is because it's so fine, if I were to go back and forth, I might slice into the to the sandpaper. Maybe I'd even slice into the block beneath it, which I definitely don't want to do. So while you can do a rub back and forth on the grit, especially after you remove the burr, generally speaking, I just go away from the blade's edge. And now moving on to the 7000 grit. This is the final sandpaper and it's just going to really give it a super nice polish. And you're actually only polishing what are called the rails. So the rail right at the edge and then right at the back of the bevel. Everything else is hollow ground. So in this sense, every time I take it back to wet dry sandpaper, it's a lot less material to remove and much, much easier to keep everything as flat as possible to avoid the kind of nightmare bevel that you saw at the beginning where it was just completely rounded off. Now it's super flat. With the wet dry sandpaper stage done, it's onto the leather straps, and this is the home stretch here. Time for that final polish. One is suede, one is smooth leather, and on the suede strop, I'm gonna have some fine honing compound, also from Hewn and Home. First thing I'll do is I'll give the suede strop a very generous coating of this honing compound and just cake it in real thick. This is extra fine honing compound from Hewn and Hone once again, highly recommend it. I can also recommend using Tormek paste and Veritas from Lee Valley Tools. So now once again, away from the blade's edge, keeping things as flat as possible, you'll see the honing compound start to actually turn black, which is good. That means it's removing that small amount of material to give my edge the final, final polish. I'll just take a moment here to talk a tiny bit about scratch patterns. You'll see me keep the knife straight when I'm making my passes, and that's because I want to follow any sort of, however not even visible to the naked eye, scratch patterns. Keeping the back of the knife as straight as possible as you make your passes down ensures that you're following any scratch patterns, which makes for a very quality edge. You'll see me use a baby wipe in between to give the knife a good cleaning so that it doesn't dirty up my already horrendously dirty strop, which I also am just going to give a quick buff and clean it off. Much overdue. The final step is a smooth leather strop. Back and forth the exact same way as the wet dry, as the honing compound. I'm going to do about 20 passes. I think about 26 that I made just to give it a very final final edge this is to remove any small amounts of wire edge any small amounts of burr on the edge of the blade to make sure it's super super fine I used to dread sharpening knives and now I really enjoy it once you have a process dialed in it's actually a really enjoyable experience this knife has seen a lot of use and I'm hoping now that it has this brand new edge, its owner will find many more years of joy using it. I'm just giving it a quick little clean off so that I can send it back in great shape. Remember the paper test from before? I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can remove any evidence of that incident. Very good, that's exactly what we wanna see. Nice and even slices. I won't use the word perfect, but it's cutting extremely well and extremely straight. And I'm very happy with how that turned out. Let's do one final little pass on the strop because I took it to the paper. And I'm gonna see how this thing shaves. Looks like it shaves effortlessly. I'm going to send this back to its owner. I hope they very much enjoy using it. And thank you very much for watching.